we're going to be talking about how to play more musical guitar solos without learning any extra notes or scales or chords or arpeggios or any of that kind of stuff. And I think it's really, really important to talk about this subject because the first thing that people usually go to when they want to learn how to solo better is learning how to play faster or learning more scales, learning more chords, this type of thing. And there's some things that we need to cover in this video that you should understand before you get so worked up and worried about learning more chords, scales, licks, and so on and so forth. So what we're going to be doing in this video is actually just using the basic A minor pentatonic uh, box scale. <laughs> And the reason for this is I want to deliberately make the note choice sort of quote unquote boring, right? This is like the first thing that everyone always says, oh, I want to get out of the A minor pentatonic box. I'm stuck in the box, stuck in the box, stuck in the box. And while there's lots of things that you should do to be able to sort of get out of that box, um, we need to be able to make the box sound good too, right? There's no reason why you shouldn't be able to make the box actually sound good. Now, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to do other things too, but there's lots of guitar players that know how to make the box sound good. So our first thing that we need to understand is that rhythm is the most important thing, okay? Hands down. So I'm gonna play over this backing track and I'm gonna pick a rhythm and just play one of the notes actually from the A minor pentatonic box scale. Uh, <laughs> Let's say this one right here. This is actually a D. It's on the third string. So let's play a solo with just one note. We got to play really good rhythms, okay? Okay, great. So now we just did that with one note. We want to be able to play all these different rhythms, quarter notes, eighth notes, half notes, whole notes, and different variations thereof, and 16th notes preferably. Now, see how I was kind of really repeating on that one note? Instead of constantly changing notes, we can sort of change from one note, play a bunch of rhythms on that note, and then change to another note, play a bunch of rhythms on that note, et cetera, et cetera. So let's demonstrate that concept. So basically one note solo, but every once in a while I'll change what note I'm playing, just to have a little bit more variation in the notes. Okay, good. So that's just one of the techniques is just make sure your rhythm is really good, right? Whether or not we're playing on one note, whether or not we're changing notes, whether or not we're literally changing notes the whole entire time, a rhythm has to be good. And you can be flexible with this after you know how to play with good rhythm, but we need to make sure that we can play in time all the time or else it's not going to work. Now, step number two is that we need to have good phrasing. So what does phrasing mean? Phrasing is essentially an offshoot of rhythm, but it's when am I playing and when am I not playing? In other words, actually trying to leave more space. So now I'm gonna give myself a little bit more flexibility with the notes, you know, just going all over the A minor pentatonic. <laughs> And we'll talk more about the notes in a second, but now I'm gonna make it so that you can't really tell 
when I'm going to play. Okay, I want to make it deliberately unpredictable. So you're going to be waiting. When's he going to play? Up, oh, and then I'll play. Let's see what that sounds like. So anyway, we'll leave it off there. Again, the phrasing is, how long am I waiting before I play? A lot of people who are less experienced with improvising, their problem is that I can always tell when they're gonna play. Specifically, they're always playing on beat one, actually. So if the tempo of the song is one, two, three, four, like this one, they'll always go one and two and three, one and two and three, one, two, two, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And that's not quite as good of phrasing because it's very, very predictable. Now, sometimes we do want to be predictable and it can help as long as we have the proper balance. So that brings us to number three thing that we can use to be more musical is repetition. Now, with repetition, we want to create a simple idea and repeat that idea and then come up with just small little changes so it's not constantly exactly the same. So for example, here's a super simple idea you can play. We'll just go back and forth between two different notes that are one string, right? Because all of the, uh, in this pattern, all the strings only have two notes on them. So on this third string, you got D and you got C. So what if I go like this? That could be a cool little idea right there. But now I can actually use that exact same idea, that same rhythm to da da da, and do it on other strings. On another string. The idea is I'm just doing that same idea on each string. So going back and forth between the two different notes that happen to be on one string. Okay, so let's see what that sounds like over the backing track. And trying to change the phrasing a little bit. changing it just a little bit. Now adding in some slides. It's still the same idea. So you see there, it's not about coming up with more ideas, it's about milking all I possibly can out of one idea that I came up with. Again, a very simple idea, right? It's not gonna take a musical genius to figure out how to play da-da-da. But once you can start repeating that idea, the listener goes, Oh yeah, that's a very, very clear musical idea that the soloist is playing. And then you add in those little teensy weensy variations and eventually you can vary it so much it turns into a different idea. That's a whole different video to talk about. But 
it makes the solo make sense and be musical. Now, next concept is not necessarily applicable in all styles of music, I will say. For example, in metal, this is not going to be as applicable, but I still think that it's super duper important. So number four is going to be dynamics. Where is dynamics? Basically just changing the volume. So if I go like this, let's take that same idea from before. And now I play really quiet. Now, all of a sudden, it's actually different. As soon as I change anything about what I'm playing, it makes it a little bit more interesting because there's variety going on. So it doesn't even necessarily have to be the rhythm or the phrasing or the notes. We can actually just change the volume. And now a listener goes, oh, yeah, there's some variation in there. It's a little bit different. So right now I'm going to play a little solo. And the only rule is going to be that I have to change the volume. I might do some other things. Don't worry about that. But listen for the volume of my playing. I'm going to try to make it so that sometimes they get loud, sometimes they get soft. Okay, so that's where my mindset is mostly at when I'm practicing this. Right, so you see there, that sounded a lot more interesting because sometimes I was getting really quiet and just chilling out on a note, right? Of course, you hear a lot of this kind of playing like in slow blues, you know, a BB King, when there's a really slow ballad blues, you'll definitely hear a lot more dynamics. So like I said, it sort of lends itself a little bit better in different styles. Like I said, metal, you're not really going to want to play like super quiet like that, right? You got to play with a lot of power, right? So, but in a lot of other styles of music, dynamics are super important. Okay, so let's talk a little bit. The last two things we're going to wrap this video up with are going to be having to do with notes. Okay, so number five specifically with this uh, <laughs> A minor pentatonic scale, and with any scale, any key, it doesn't matter. One thing that can help you sound a lot more interesting with your note selection is simply string skipping. And a lot of people don't really string skip a lot because we always practice the notes like this. So we never practice the scale string skipping, but what you should do is try to see, hey, how can I make this work by deleting some of the strings? Like, for example, what if I play only the sixth string, the fourth string, and then the second string? Or what if I only play the fifth, third, and first? Now, all of a sudden, it sounds a lot less predictable, like I was saying. So we're going to try playing a solo now like that with a lot of string skipping. That's all we're going to sort of think about is, hey, I want to do a lot of string skipping. Whatever rhythms I want, whatever dynamics I want, I'm not going to worry about that. Sometimes it's hard.
as you can see, just practicing improvising like that too is actually going to help your technique, right? Because you have to have a tremendous amount of accuracy to pull off this string skipping thing. So now we're going to get into the last part of the video, which is number six is going to be creating patterns. So we sort of did this a little bit earlier with the repetition where we made this little so in a way we could think of that as a pattern now here's a pattern i want to show you i was doing this a little bit so we play two strings sorry two notes on one string so like on the fifth string we're going to play the fifth fret seventh fret and then we're going to play one note on the string that's below it, lower pitched. I know some people think that this means lower. No, these are the higher strings because they sound higher. So like this. So we play the two notes on that string and then we play one note on the string below. And we're just gonna repeat that pattern on the next set of strings. And then again. And then again, and then again. So if you practice this really fast, it'll sound like this. And now all of a sudden, again, it sounds in a way kind of repetitive, right? Because the pattern repeats itself, but we keep changing the notes over and over and over and over. So let's see what it sounds like to solo with that pattern. Again, change it a little bit. away from it a little bit. Back to the pattern. So, as you can see, you can milk a lot of stuff out of one idea, like a pattern that's a little bit more complicated like that, or a simpler idea like we did earlier in the video. That's sort of the name of the game, and that's why I wanted to make this video to show you all these different ways that we can be more musical without necessarily learning any more scales or any more notes. And then if you take these tools and apply them when you do learn more scales, learn more arpeggios, understand harmony better, now that's where you start to sound really, really, really good. So that's gonna be the end of this video. Until next time, listen, learn, and jam.